Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of gastritis or stomach inflammation. If you want more information on acute gastritis, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what gastritis is. Gastritis is an inflammation of the gastric or stomach mucosa. So it's an inflammation of the lining inside the stomach. It's actually in the word gastritis. The prefix gast refers to the stomach and itis refers to inflammation. Now, gastritis may affect part of the stomach or the entire stomach in some cases. There are a variety of causes of gastritis. Again, if you want more information on the causes, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But some of the causes that can lead to gastritis include infections. So an infection with the bacteria Helicobacter pylori can lead to inflammation of the stomach. This would be considered H. pylori gastritis. Alcohol and smoking can also lead to gastritis as well. Certain medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs like ibuprofen. If ibuprofen is used for a long period of time, this can lead to stomach inflammation. We can also see it with iron supplements and colchicine, which is a gout medication. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, so persistent chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease can lead to erosive gastritis. So this is another important cause of gastritis. And then ischemia, if there's not enough blood flow to the stomach to supply the tissues and the lining within the stomach, parts of the lining can die and this can lead to gastritis. So as you can see, many different causes of gastritis that lead to multiple types of gastritis. So most types are going to have very similar signs and symptoms, but some of them are going to have very specific signs and symptoms we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. Although there are many causes, they all have something in common. They all lead to increased destructive processes that outweigh protective mechanisms within the gastric mucosa. So in the lining of the stomach, in the gastric mucosa, there is natural protective mechanisms against damage. However, a lot of these causes either deplete the protective mechanisms or increase destructive processes that outcompete or outweigh those protective mechanisms. So ultimately, they all have that in common. Now, the topic of this lesson is that gastritis has a variety of signs and symptoms. We're going to talk about those in the next upcoming slides. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, it's important to make note of the fact that gastritis may be asymptomatic. In fact, a lot of patients may have inflammation of their stomach and not even know it. This can be particularly found in cases of H. pylori gastritis. So that infection with that bacteria Helicobacter pylori can lead to inflammation of the stomach and the patient might not even know they have gastritis. But if a patient does experience symptoms, there is often a sudden onset. So oftentimes, suddenly they'll have multiple symptoms that we're going to talk about here in a moment. So one of those symptoms is going to be abdominal pain. It's going to be more specifically epigastric pain. So epigastric pain is going to be located in this area here. So above the belly button or above the umbilicus. So right in the center is where the epigastric area is. And that is going to be where a patient is oftentimes going to have some pain. And that pain may improve or worsen with eating. So it doesn't necessarily follow any pattern, but there can be some change with eating. And in some very rare cases, this pain can be very severe and acute as would be found in the case of phlegmonous gastritis. That's where the stomach becomes gangrenous. Another very common symptom of gastritis is dyspepsia. So dyspepsia can be considered indigestion. It's a discomfort in the epigastric area. So in the same area we mentioned here, but it is more of a discomfort. Oftentimes it can be described as a gnawing and burning sensation as well in that area. And oftentimes this is going to be a very common symptom, but oftentimes it's going to be mild in severity. Some other signs and symptoms include nausea and vomiting. So feeling nauseous and vomiting may occur with gastritis due to inflammation of the stomach. So you can imagine that if the stomach is inflamed, this can cause some nausea for the patient. This can also lead to a reduced appetite as well. So a reduction or loss of appetite can occur with gastritis. And again, this is due to stomach inflammation. Patients can also report abdominal fullness. So having a feeling of a sensation of fullness may occur in some patients. Again, it's going to occur in that epigastric area and it's going to occur after eating. So this can often be the case with gastritis. And again, it's going to occur in the epigastric area. Now patients with gastritis can also experience bloating as well. So this can be a common finding. So feeling of being bloated can occur. And then belching can also be something that can be found. So more frequent burping may occur with gastritis as well. Now some more rare findings include the following. Fever and chills. Some patients may have a fever and chills although again, this is going to be less common and it may occur due to inflammation or infection. And then another interesting finding 
in patients with gastritis is hiccups. So hiccups can actually be a sign of gastritis, especially if those hiccups are persistent and long-lasting. So that gastritis, that inflammation of the stomach can lead to persistent long-lasting hiccups. So the reason being is that the stomach inflammation may trigger the hiccup reflex. So other gastrointestinal conditions can cause persistent hiccups, but this is one of them. So this is an interesting finding to make note of. Now, some more serious findings that can occur in gastritis include bleeding. So the bleeding can either be occult bleeding, which means that the patient wouldn't even realize they're having a bleed, or it can be hematochesia, which is a bright red and bloody stool, or they can have melina, which it would be dark and black, tarry and smelly stool. So the difference between hematochesia and melina, again, hematochesia is bright red in coloration. It's a bright red stool. This is going to occur oftentimes from a lower gastrointestinal bleed, but if it's from an inflamed stomach, oftentimes it's going to be due to a very brisk, quick bleed. If it's melina, that means that the blood has been digested. So if it's a slower bleed, the blood has enough time to be digested in the gastrointestinal system, and then it's going to come out as a black tarry stool. So those are the two differences with regards to hematochesia and melina. And this bleeding is going to be due to a bleeding erosion or ulcer. So that inflammation in the stomach can lead to an erosion or an ulceration. And then some patients can experience hematemesis, which is vomiting of blood. This can be red in color. So it may be just small amounts of blood. It may be just streaks of blood in the mucus. In some cases, it may be what we would call coffee ground emesis. This is where there is some blood that has been digested by the stomach a little bit, and then it gets vomited up, and it looks like coffee grounds. So either it can be red in coloration, so again, it can be a little bit that may be noted in some mucus, or it can be this coffee ground emesis. It looks like coffee grounds in the vomit, so that can also occur with gastritis as well. And again, this hematemesis is going to be due to a bleeding ulcer or erosion. And all of that bleeding can lead to anemia. So anemia is a low hemoglobin count. So again, it's from the blood losses that we talked about before. It's from that occult bleed. So the patient might not even know that they're having a bleed. There might be some very little amount of blood in the stool that they don't even recognize. So that would be an occult bleed. And this can lead to anemia in some cases. Or they can have frank bleeding, which would be hematochesia or melina or hematemesis, which we talked about before. So all of those can lead to bleeding and blood losses. And those blood losses are going to lead to iron deficiency, which is ultimately going to lead to an iron deficiency anemia. So because of that iron deficiency anemia, patients are going to have signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. So those are going to include fatigue, pallor, shortness of breath, and some other interesting findings and associated conditions like restless leg syndrome. So if you want more information on the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, please check out my full lesson on that topic. So this anemia, along with bleeding, may actually be the presenting complaint in certain patients, especially those with chronic gastritis or autoimmune gastritis. So these two types of gastritis might not have some of those more overt signs and symptoms we talked about before, like the abdominal pain and the nausea and vomiting. They may just have some very small minor complaints like anemia and some nutrient deficiencies we're going to talk about here in a moment. So very important to recognize that a patient that has anemia may be due to gastrointestinal blood losses. That's very important to actually look out for in a patient that has especially iron deficiency anemia. So again, very important to look out for. And even if the patient doesn't recognize any bleeds, it may be from an occult bleed. And then as I just alluded to, there are nutrient deficiencies that can occur as well. These include vitamin B12 deficiency along with iron deficiency we just talked about. Oftentimes these nutrient deficiencies are going to occur in autoimmune gastritis. Now this iron deficiency that can occur from autoimmune gastritis is going to be due to reduced levels of hydrochloric acid within the stomach. So it doesn't allow the proper absorption of iron. So this iron deficiency is also going to contribute to the iron deficiency anemia we just talked about. This can also lead to issues with vitamin B12 digestion and absorption, leading to signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, including some neurological findings like symmetric paresthesias and some other findings like depression. So if you want more information on the signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And then there are some important complications that can occur with gastritis. These include gastric outlet obstruction. So after food has been digested in the stomach, it goes out of the stomach. This would be the gastric outlet here. And what can happen is this part of the stomach can be obstructed. There can be a blockage in that area due to excessive edema. So edema is swelling. So due to that inflammation in the stomach, there can be some swelling in the tissues. And this can actually block off the gastric outlet. So very important to recognize this as well. This essentially leads to a bowel obstruction. There is an obstruction that doesn't allow food contents to pass. 
This can lead to worsening nausea and vomiting along with constipation and obstipation. So you can imagine that if nothing is going through past that gastric outlet, nothing is going to go through the gastrointestinal system. So there's going to be constipation and then obstipation would be where a patient doesn't even pass flatus. So those can occur in severe cases of gastritis with a complication of gastric outlet obstruction. And then we can also see dehydration occurring in some patients. This is going to occur from excessive vomiting. So if a patient does have very severe gastritis where they have nausea and a lot of vomiting, they can become dehydrated. And this can lead to signs of dehydration like dry mucous membranes, as you can see in this image here with this tongue being very dried out. And then this dehydration can lead to an acute kidney injury. So because there's not enough fluid volume getting to the kidneys, this can lead to an acute kidney injury. If you want to learn about how acute gastritis is diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.